Yo, what's going on Epic 7? I'm Sue and this is my beginner's guide to the Katie's hunt, aka the most miserable hunt in all of Epic 7. Katie's is a hunt that you're only going to try to farm if you need gear from one of its specific sets because more often than not, it is more efficient to farm any of the other four hunts that we talked about in this beginner hunt series. The main draw to this hunt is one of two sets, either the penetration set or the torrent set. Penetration increases your character's single target damage, while Torrent is better for AOE damage dealers or characters that already penetrate 100% of a target's defense. The other two sets that this hunt contains are Revenge and Injury. And despite the fact that there are some people on my Discord that are huge fans of Revenge and Injury sets, niche is an understatement when we talk about these things. You can count on one hand the number of characters in this game where their best in slot option is revenge or injury. So yeah, not exactly a very high value hunt. To make matters worse, Katie's is also the most difficult hunt in the entire game to clear as a brand new player. I've tried my best in this video to give you a starter Katie's team that is entirely free to play using basically connection and quest heroes and one basically three star that you most likely have from the game's gotcha. On top of that, I'm using entirely free to play gear gained from either the sixth anniversary dash pass event or the adventurer's path. So you should be able to very easily be able to assemble the team that I'm going to be talking about here in this video. The goal is basically just hopefully to get you to jump in to Katie's as early as possible. So that, that way you can get penetration and torrent gear very quickly. If that is all you care about after you watch this video though, please consider taking a look at my advanced Katie's guide. I will link it down in this video's description. There are several characters and teams in that video, such as Violet, Rowana, or Asari that you might actually have access to. And if you do, you can add them to your team and it will drastically cut down on the clear time. The clear time in this video is like about three and a half to four minutes most of the time. If you have some of these rarer five stars, it again, exponentially speeds up your clear and will help you get that torrent and penetration gear that much quicker. Let's talk about keys to success for this hunt. Number one, healers that can cleanse because, well, the boss just does a lot of damage and it slows and restricts your team, which is going to make it very difficult for you to cycle out of its core mechanic that we'll be talking about later. And number two, as a brand new player, every character on your team has to have a non-attack skill. Now, the reason for that is every time a hero attacks, they gain one danger level. When they have danger level four or five, Katie's is most likely going to kill that character like nearly instantly. The only way for you to cleanse danger level is to use a non-attack skill on a hero, which is why everybody needs it because otherwise they're just going to die at some point before you can kill the boss. I feel like it is, as a new player, nearly impossible to get away without playing four non-attack skill heroes in this hunt. Once you get better gear or much rarer units, it is entirely possible to kill the Katie's very, very quickly with characters like, say, maybe Commander Lorena, who don't have non-attack skills, but as a beginner, I've decided to err on the side of caution and go with a much slower, more stable clear using the team that you see here. So let's break it down and talk about the characters that we're playing, starting with Sermia. You get Sermia from the game's Expert Hunt Challenge. I'm going to go so far as to say level 60 six-star awakening is required for this fight on Sermia if you want to have this beginner team because she cuts it very close to dying all the time uh, in this fight. So as you can see here on my gear, I'm using all of the free gear from the 6th uh, anniversary dash pass event. I have just over 10,000 health. I survived some of these hits with like 200 or less HP. So if you can get this HP up higher to like 11 or 12k, that will go a long way in helping you have more stable clears, even if they are a bit slower. As for how we build the character, you want Daydream Joker. Uh, even though Katie's cuts Daydream Joker's effectiveness in half, it's still, for the most part, one of the best, if not the best damage option you can play on the character. As for the right side main pieces here, speed on the boots, because we need Sermi to take turns in a timely fashion. If she gets like a random dual attack and she's really slow, she might just end up dying and not be able to cycle out of danger level. Attack percentage here on the ring and critical hit damage here on the necklace. Of important note, the exclusive equipment is Barrier on the S2. That helps Sermia survive. Without this barrier, I think she dies pretty much every time. Again, unless you have like really, really high health. You know, a, basically an ideal world, you would play the extra chance at an S1 
on uh, her exclusive equipment number one. But I find that it just, if it ends up high rolling, you end up dying and just overall the run's just not very consistent. So for me, hot streak barrier for two turns makes the run the most consistent. As for healers, Tamarin. Don't really have to explain this one. I've explained it in pretty much every beginner video up until this point. Plus seven on Song of the Forest, Shining Star, Wondrous Potion Vial to help with all the debuffs, speed on the boots, health percentage on the ring, health percentage on the necklace, right? As fast as we could possibly get her. The faster you get her, the easier it's going to be for you to heal, for you to get idle, to keep debuffs off your team, keep attack buff up full time, yada, yada, yada. Amazing character, probably the best PvE character in all of Epic 7. Next up is Furious. Now, Furious, you can basically leave him exactly the same as the beginner Wyvern team. It's the same exact build that we talked about in the beginner Wyvern video. So you don't have to worry too much about that. The only stat you actually care about, aside from the 65 plus percent effectiveness this time, is your speed. You want to make sure that he is faster than Sermia because otherwise it's going to be super awkward when Sermia uses all of her damage and then Furious goes for the defense break after. So you want it to go Furious defense break into all of Sermia's damage. So that's why he's got to be slightly faster than Sermia. So that way you can make sure that he gets that defense break consistently and Sermia is getting the most amount of damage outright. Obviously his non-attack skill is morale boost, which is super good. So you only need 50% critical hit chance ideally or i should say honestly you could just play sermia at 50 percent crit chance if you want to right just because morale boost will cover the rest if you want to pick up like extra hp or things like that that is fine now let's talk about the last slot i'm using angelic montmorency which used to be in the game's connections but they got rid of it like pretty much right as i posted my beginner wyvern 13 guide so uh, she's not there anymore, so there's a chance you might not have access to this character. She is a free three-star that you'll get from gotchas and stuff, but uh, just make sure you have her specialty change unlocked. In this slot, there's a number of things that you can play. Green Rowana is amazing in this slot. If you have Green Rowana, I highly recommend her. If you put her on like Stella Harpa as the artifact, that will pretty much carry you through the hunt. You have almost like no chance of failing, I feel like, uh, with the team with Rowana at the helm. Uh, Green Violet surprisingly also can work as your frontliner tank but for me for this i'm just using angelic montmorency because she's already the frontliner for my wyvern team and she has bonus healing which will keep sermia alive and she has tons of cleanses in her kit which again will make things a lot easier i just have all of her skills leveled for healing and as you can see i have magarajo's tome here as the artifact to help with cycling boots are speed Effect resistance as our ring, so that way we can get around like 180 to 200 effect resistance with her skill tree maxed out. That's really, really helpful because then she won't be getting hit with debuffs. She won't be getting hit with slow, so she can kind of move at normal speed and cleanse everybody up. And then necklace here is going to be health percentage. Again, if you have Rowana or Violet, feel free to use those characters. They work fine. And again, don't forget to look at the advanced Katie's guide linked down in the description to look at some of the other options that you can play here for Katie's. With all that out of the way now, let's jump in and see how an actual run works now. So your first encounter here will be against the Samaquis. At higher difficulties, he has counter attacks and stuns in his kit. You can kind of dodge this with immunity gear on your characters if you already have that from farming as a manic from that beginner's guy, but it's not entirely necessary. As you can see, we get the nice defense break from Furious. Sermia immediately goes into big damage. The one thing that's nice about the Samakris is he doesn't have like a ton of health. You should be able to get through this guy pretty quickly. So now we come to Katie's himself. He starts with his ultimate, which is going to slow and restrict everybody. Unfortunately, in this clear, we got speed RNG, as we talked about before. Sermia went ahead of Furious. Again, it's important to have that Furious kind of be a little bit faster than Sermia. Song, shine free. Here I go. Forward, forward. 
morale boost into defense break here. Now, Sarmia gets this huge barrier. Does decent damage here. And now, since she has the highest danger level, you'll see that the KDS is going to focus her, but because we're on the barrier exclusive equipment, it keeps her safe. Ladies and gentlemen, let's shine! to be okay. Fight for Aachen to the end. Glory for Aachen. To our foes. Now comes the dangerous part where Sermia is at danger level 4 here. So she's going to be in major trouble. She might die at this point. If your Sermia is dying here, you need to make sure you get her HP a little bit higher. That must have been painful. How about we try a little harder? There is no mercy in a real fight. Go away. And there you have it. That's what a Katie's Clear looks like. As I said earlier in the video, if you're looking for faster, more advanced clears for Katie's, make sure to check out my Advanced Katie's 13 guide, which I'll link down in this video's description. If you have any other questions, let me know again down in the comments below. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.